all life, be it flesh and blood or metal and machine, strives for one thing, survival. The Stainless Steel Leech by Roger Zelazny, read by Carl Wallace. They're really afraid, afraid of this place. During the day, they'll clank around the headstones that they're ordered to, but even Central can't make them surf at, at night, despite the ultras on the infras, and they'll never enter a mausoleum. Which makes things nice for me. They're superstitious. It's a, a part of the circuitry. They were designed to serve man, and during his brief time on Earth, awe and devotion, as well as dread, were automatic things. Even the last man, Dead Kennington, commanded every robot in existence while he lived. His person was a thing of veneration, and all his orders were obeyed. And a man is a man, alive or dead, which is why the graveyards are a combination of hell, heaven, and strange feedback. They remain apart from the city so long as the earth endures. But even as I mocked them at looking behind the stones and appearing in, into the gullies, they were searching for, I'm afraid they might find, me. I, the unjunct and legend, once out of a million assemblies, it's effective such as I might appear and go un undetected until too late. At will, I could cut the circuit that connected me with central control and bring a free bot and master my own movements. I like to visit the cemeteries because they were quiet and different from the maddening stamp stamp of the presses and the clanking of the crowds. I like to look at the green and red and yellow and blue things that grew about the graveyards. And I did not fear these places, but that circuit too was a uh, detective. So when it was discovered, they removed my vite box and threw me on the junk heap. But the next day I was gone, and their fear was great. I no longer possess a self-contained power unit. But the freak coils within my chest act as uh, storage batteries. They require frequent recharging, however, and there is only one way to do that. The whereabout is the most frightful legend whispered among the gleaming steel towers, when the night wind sighs with its burden of fears out of the past, from days when non-metal beings walk the earth. The half-lights, the prayers upon order, still cry darkest within the white box of every box. I discontent, the unjunct, live here in Rosewood Park, among the dogwood and myrtle, the headstones and, and broken angels, with Fritz, another legend in our deep and peaceful mausoleum. Fritz is a vampire, which is a terrible and tragic thing. He is so undernourished he can no longer move about, but he cannot die either, so he lies in his casket and dreams of times gone by. One day he will ask me to carry him outside in the sunlight, I will watch him shrivel and dim into peace and nothingness and dust. I hope he does not ask me soon. We talk. At night, when the moon is full and he feels strong enough, he tells me of his better days in places called Austria and Hungary, where he too was feared and hunted. But only a stingless steel leech can get blood out of a stone, or a robot, he said last night. It's a proud and lonely thing to be a stingless steel leech. You're probably the only one of your kind in existence. Uh, live up to your reputation. Hound them. Drain them. Leave your mark on a thousand steel throats. And he was right. He's always right. He knows more about these things than I. Kennington, his thin bloodless lips smiled. Oh, what a deal we've, duel we fought. He was the last man on earth and I the last vampire. For ten years I, I, I tried to drain him. I got him twice, but he was in the old country and knew what... Uh, Precautions to take. When he warned of my existence, he issued a wooden stake to every robot. But I had 42 graves in those days, and they never found me. They did come close, though. But at night, uh, at night, he chuckled. Then things were reversed. I was the hunter, and he the prey. I remember his frantic questing after the last few sprays of garlic and uh, wolf's bane on earth. The crucifix assembly lines he kept in operation uh, around the clock. <laughs> irreligious soul he was. I was generally sorry when he died in peace. Not so much because I hadn't got to drain him properly, but because he was a worthy opponent and a suitable uh, antagonist. What a game we played. His husky voice weakened. He sleeps a scant three hundred paces from here, bleaching and dry. This is a great marble tomb by the gate. Please gather roses tomorrow and place them upon it. I agreed that I would, but as the closest kinship between the two of us and between myself and any bot, 
despite the dictates of resemblance. And I must keep my word, for this day passes in the evening, and although there are searches above, for such is the flaw of my nature. Damn them. He taught me that word. Damn them, I say. I'm coming up. Beware, gentle bots. I shall walk among you, and you shall not know me. I shall join the search, and you will think I am one of you. I shall gather the red flowers for, 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 for dead Kennington, rubbing shoulders with you, and Fitz will smile at the joke. I climb the cracked and hollow steps, the east already spilling twilight, and the sun half withered in the west. I emerge. The roses live on the wall as across the road. From great twisting tubes of vine with hedge brighter than any rust, they burn like danger lights on a control panel, but moistly. One, two, three roses for, for Kennington. Four, five. Oh, uh, what, what are you doing, bot? Gathering roses. You are supposed to be searching for the were bot. Has something damaged you? No, I'm all right, I say. And I fix him where he stands by, b b b by b bumping against his soldier, shoulder. The circuit completed, I drain, drain his vite box until I am filled. You are the were bot, he intones weakly. He falls by the crash. Six, seven, eight roses. Dead Kennington, dead as the bot at my feet. More dead, for he wants to live the full organic life, nearer to Fritz's of my own than to theirs. What happened here, bot? He has stopped, and I am picking roses, I tell them. There are four bots in and over. It is time you left this place, I say. Shortly, it will be night, and the werebot will, 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 uh, will walk. Leave or he will end you. You stopped him, says the over. You are the werebot. I punch all the flowers against my chest with one arm and turn to face them. The over, a large special litter bot, moves toward me. Others are approaching from all directions. He had sent out a call. You are a strange and terrible thing, he is saying. You must be jumped for the sake of the uh, community. He seizes me and I drop uh, Kennington's flowers. I cannot drain him. My clothes, clothes are already loaded in the other capacity and he is specially uh, insulated. There are dozens around me now, fearing and hating. They will joke me, and I will lie beside uh, Kennington. Rust in peace, they will say. I am sorry that I cannot keep my promise to Fritz. Release him. No. It is shrouded and mouldering Fritz in the doorway of the mausoleum, swaying, clutching at the stones. He always knows. Release him. I, a human, order it. He's asping and gasping, and the sunlight is doing awful things to him. The ancient circus quick, and suddenly I am free. Yes, master, says the over. We did not know. Seize that robot! He points with a shaking, emaciated finger at him. He is the werebot, he gasps. Destroy him! The one gathering flowers was obeying my orders. Leave him here with me. He falls to his knees, and the final darts of day pierce his flesh. And go! All the rest of you! Quickly, it's my order that no robot ever enter another graveyard again. He collapses within, and I know that now there are only bones and bits of rotted shroud on the doorstep of our home. Fritz has had his final joke, a human masquerade. I take the roses to, to uh, Kennington as the silent bots file out to the gate forever, bearing the unprotesting overbot with them. I place the roses at the foot of, 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 of the monument. Kennington's and Fritz's, the monuments of the last strange, truly uh, living ones. Now only I remain unjumped. In the final light of the sun, I see them drive a stake through the over's white box and bury him at the crossroads. Then they hurry back to their towers of steel and plastic. I gather up the remains of Fritz and carry him down to his box. The bones are bristle and silent. It's a very proud and lonely thing to be in a stainless steel leech. The end.